In the world of game hacking, programming is simply a means to an end. You must first spend countless hours reverse engineering the game, finding vulnerabilities that will give you an advantage. Then you can exploit the vulnerabilities with code. Most people fail to realize that programming languages are just tools. They have different features and do different things, but at the end of the day, it's all about talking to the computer. There's no single language that does everything the best. Your choice in language should be determined by what you're trying to accomplish and nothing else. With that being said, there is one programming language that stands out above the rest, and that language is C++. Before we jump in, this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. The only way to learn something is by actually doing it, a core aspect of Brilliant's philosophy and precisely why I decided to partner with them. After 12 years of unenthusiastic lectures in school, Brilliant's lessons are like a breath of fresh air. They are bite-sized, interactive, visually stimulating, and to the point. The best thing I've found about Brilliant is that instead of memorizing and regurgitating information, Brilliant encourages you to critically think and solve problems. Those are two very important important skills in the world. I decided to have a go at their Python course, and I must say, I was quite impressed. Most Python courses are walls of text, but this course will have you answering questions and writing code immediately. Whether you're interested in math, physics, or computer science, you can get started today completely free by heading over to brilliant.org forward slash CAS for a 30-day trial period. The first 200 viewers to click this link will also receive a 20% discount on the annual subscription. Thanks for listening, and let's get back to the video. I couldn't wrap my head around why everyone recommended C++ when I was getting started. Most people consider the language to be overly complex, and those people are completely correct. The language is verbose and complex, but it's the reason why that makes it so special. As you should know, C++ is a descendant of the legendary C language. For the uninitiated amongst you, C is probably the most influential programming language ever created. It was made during the 1970s, and it's responsible for countless things like operating systems, game engines, embedded systems, and even other programming languages. C, at its core, is relatively small and simple. The language only has 32 keywords, which is about the same as Python. You might want to compare these two languages, but that would be extremely naive, because Python, the entire programming language, was actually coded in C. In fact, C++, the subject of this video, a massively complex language, was also written in C. There's clearly something extremely special about C, something that enables this relatively simple language to accomplish the most complex things. The creator of C++, Bjarni Straustrup, recognized this and sought to preserve the essence of C within his new programming language. In my opinion, the essence of C is the dangerous amount of freedom that the language affords its programmers. Remember, C was designed as a systems programming language. It was intended to run in environments where resources are limited. The language was meant to operate as close to the hardware as possible so that developers could fine tune the performance of their programs in constrained situations. C has unrivaled memory access with basically no rules, allowing you to bend the computer at your leisure. But in the same breath, C programmers are notorious for shooting themselves in the foot. It's said that 90% of C code is compatible with C++, which means that pretty much everything great about C also applies to C++. Furthermore, C++ has tried to modernize, expand, and improve the C language without breaking compatibility. C++ has not removed anything from C. It has only expanded the language, making it safer and more powerful in many aspects. With that being said, it should be no surprise that C++ is dominant in fields where performance is crucial, and one such field is the video game industry. Because game hacking is some bastardization of game development and reverse engineering, it makes sense that C++ is dominant here as well. When your operating system has been written in C, and the game you're trying to hack has been written in C++, you gain an advantage when you use C++, because you don't have to worry about compatibility. Majority of competitive game hacking is just a matter of changing the game's memory, but said memory is managed by your computer's operating system. The core Windows functionality is exposed to developers through the Windows API, which behaves as an interface between the programmer and the operating system. The Windows API in specific has been fully written in C because that's what the operating system was originally programmed in. Therefore, if you wanna use the Windows API, you need to use a C compatible programming language. And most of the time, the best option is C++. At this point, you might be wondering how languages other than C or C++ access the operating system. Earlier, I mentioned that Python was literally coded in C, and this is where that concept becomes important. We all know Python as a programming language, but it's actually just a program that understands a programming language. If you have Python installed on your computer, you can open the command line and type python.exe to launch the Python interpreter. In this environment, you can write code and literally have it run immediately. 
This is because Python is actually just a C program, like any other program. It's just special because it understands certain words, and we call those words a programming language. This is completely different to C or C++, because those languages have to be compiled into machine code before you can ever run the program. You can hack games in Python because Python code gets translated into C code, which obviously can speak to the operating system. This is also why Python is so slow when compared to C or C++, because there's an extra step between Python and the operating system, whereas C or C++ code has direct access. Keep in mind that everything I've just explained about Python also applies to other interpreted languages, like JavaScript running in Node, for example. I've been programming in C++ for at least three years at this point, and I'm still regularly learning new things. It's become my absolute favorite language, not because I like it, but because often it's the only language that does what I needed to do. If you're interested in getting started with C++, I'll have some resources down below. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and possibly learned something new. A massive shout out goes to the following patrons. Thank you for the support. And if you have any feedback or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.